Around 3300 BCE, the first people of the ancient world entered what has become known as the Bronze Age. As the name might suggest, this was a period in human history that saw the advent of metallurgy, with bronze being one of the first metals to be worked by early humans, living in basic communities or ancient civilizations. Copper was harnessed by man prior to this period, and when copper was combined with tin, bronze, a tougher alloy metal, was made. Civilizations who had unlocked this technology were considered to be participants of Bronze Age culture, and communities who were able to harness bronze working used the metal to make an array of artifacts, tools, structures, and more. It wasn't just metalworking that developed during this time, though. In the Bronze Age, certain peoples developed their own forms of writing, and various important cultural developments took place all over the ancient world. Human culture and lifestyle by the end of the Bronze Age had become much more familiar to those we would see in the modern day, albeit using archaic technologies to advance their communities. In today's video, we will be traveling back to the ancient world of the Bronze Age to meet the inhabitants of the key areas of the world in which it took place, Asia, Africa, and Europe. We will meet the peoples who lived in these lands, including some of the very earliest major civilizations in human history, exploring how they lived, how they utilized metalworking, and what their cultures looked like. Sit back and relax as we take you back to 3300 BCE to explore the Bronze Age, the next chapter in our story of human history. Before we explore the individual regions of the world in the Bronze Age, let's take a look at how the metal was first harnessed and what made a Bronze Age community a Bronze Age community. It is important to note that bronze working was not commonly utilized across the world at the exact same time. Rather, it is a technology that appeared at different points and places across the time period, spanning 3300 BCE and 1200 BCE, and sometimes much later. In some regions, it was only the ruling classes that were able to utilize bronze and the metal was not found as a household item across entire civilizations or communities. In others, bronze was widely available, or was distributed to more and more people as the Bronze Age progressed. Bronze working is thought to have first been harnessed in Western Asia, specifically in the Tigris-Euphrates Valley in what is today composed of parts of Iraq, Turkey, Syria, Kuwait, and Iran. How specifically early humans were able to create this alloy is a matter of debate, but it may have been discovered by a chance accident when metal workers producing copper combined tin and discovered that the results were much more durable and flexible. The resulting bronze was the perfect material to be used in weaponry, art, jewelry, construction, and more and was much more easily forged and worked with than copper on its own. The discovery of bronze working firmly put an end to the widespread use of stone tools and weapons, and from this point onwards, metal spears, arrowheads, and blades would become commonplace in combat and warfare. Not only did metalworking characterize the Bronze Age, but the rise of civilizations and kingdoms did too. Communities were linked together by early governments and rulers, forming the bases of early countries or nations. In the Fertile Crescent, the Sumerians, Babylonians, and Assyrians would appear, as with the Kingdom of Athens in ancient Greece. Many of these civilizations communicated and interacted through the use of trade, and bronze was transported far across Eurasia to boost economies and enhance the technological capabilities of civilizations. The technological powerhouse regions of the Near East and Western Asia were the first regions of the world to officially enter the Bronze Age, 
where usage of the metal became widespread. The Sumerian civilization were thought to be the first to harness the power of bronze working and were the first civilization known from the Mesopotamian region in general. The civilization was composed of a number of city-states, some of the most famous of which include Ur, Uruk, Nippur, Eridu, and Akkad. The Sumerians were amongst the first peoples of Mesopotamia to build huge wonders, such as the famous ziggurats, terraced structures that were seen as houses of the gods. Moreover, the ancient Sumerians were thought to have been the first people to invent the wheel, inserting axles into discs of wood that would eventually be hollowed out to make them more lightweight. This basic structure would form the makings of the first carts and plows that could be pulled by domesticated animals to cultivate the land quicker. This technology would progress into the development and use of chariots, machinery, and carriages that would be used throughout history to form the bases of modern cars and more. The Sumerians were by no means the only civilization to crop up at this time as the Hittite Empire was established in the 18th century BC. The Hittites arose in Anatolia in Western Asia, stretching as far as what would become modern-day Syria. Bronze tablets have been found from the Hittite Empire that represent some of the first forms of recorded writing, some of which are thought to represent treaties between rulers of empires with engravings of early characters and letters etched into the metal. The Middle Bronze Age saw the rise of the Elam civilization, which formed in eastern Mesopotamia on the Iranian plateau. Amidst the artifacts that have been uncovered from their ruins include stone statues, silver cups with masterfully engraved figures, carnelian beads, and tablets which depict battles between the Elamites and the Assyrians. Amidst the other Bronze Age civilizations that would emerge in this region are the Oxus from Central Asia, who were masters in utilizing pottery wheels, and the Kuli culture of South Asia, who dammed rivers and built an economy based on agriculture. In life, these civilizations would have varied greatly from place to place, each with their own distinct practices, rituals, artifacts, and ways of life. One of the most iconic cities of ancient history, Babylon, would be founded in the Bronze Age. Sitting proudly on the lower Euphrates River, this was a central political and cultural hub of the Babylonians, both their old and new empires. As the Babylonians developed and spread out across Mesopotamia, an Amorite man by the name of Hammurabi began to build up the city and spread it out into a major cultural site. He declared himself king of Babylon, and his son would continue his reign before the empire declined and Babylon was ruled in turn by the Assyrians, Kassites, and Elamites. Babylon to this day remains a staple city in culture and legend, closely associated with the ancient Bronze Age. Throughout the Bronze Age, large swaths of land in Central Asia, the region that would one day become the likes of Kazakhstan and Mongolia, were inhabited by agro-pastoralists a group of ancient peoples who combined a farming lifestyle with the basics of early civilization. These people would trade frequently with the early Chinese empires, introducing the cultivation of several crops such as wheat, millet, and barley to regions across ancient Asia. China itself is thought to have entered the Bronze Age in around 3100 BC, the oldest artifacts being from the Sichuan region. Bronze knives, as well as very intricately painted pots, have been uncovered from this area that are thought to have been Bronze Age in origin. While the exact time China entered the Bronze Age is debated, it is often associated with the Shang Dynasty or Yin Dynasty. 
The Shang ruled the Yellow River Valley from 1600 BC to 1045 BC and are thought to have been one of the earliest of the various Chinese dynasties that controlled the empire across its ancient history. China first developed writing under the Shang Dynasty, detailing inscribed ritual practices and holy texts on oracle bones, pieces of turtle shell or the shoulder bones of oxen. Much of the information that has been discerned from the inscriptions on these bones include details of what the political and social climates were like in the Shang Dynasty of the Bronze Age too. It is possible that some of the bronze artifacts known from China may have actually predated the Shang Dynasty, belonging instead to the preceding Xia Dynasty. Korea and Japan entered the Bronze Age much later than China, perhaps as a result of their insular and peninsular locations. The Japanese began working bronze around 300 BC in the early Yayoi period where settlers, likely from China or Korea, brought the technology with them. Korea discovered the technology around 1000 to 800 BC and is thought to have radiated north from China. Many Korean artifacts from the Bronze Age consist of ritual objects, including blades and vessels. Bronze blades were typically buried with politicians, priests, and leaders and was seen as a valuable offering to the gods for a person entering the afterlife. Previously on this channel, we have covered the great archaeological site of Mohenjo-Daro, the great city of the Indus Valley Civilization. The Indus River Valley peoples, such as the Harappans, were amongst the first communities to enter the Bronze Age, working with lead as well as bronze. Mohenjo-Daro, as a result, was a great focal point of the Bronze Age and one of the largest settlements of the period altogether. Between 30 to 60,000 people are thought to have lived in Mohenjo-Daro during the Bronze Age, and the settlement blossomed to become one of the most important cultural hubs of the ancient world. Mohenjo-Daro in itself was famous for its early developments in urban planning, brick building, water distribution and irrigation systems, and craftsmanship. The first civilization in Europe to utilize widespread production of bronze were the Aegean. Artifacts have been discovered from Eastern Europe, which potentially date back to around 4650 BC. But use of the technology skyrocketed when the Aegeans established a trade network across the Mediterranean with a heavy focus on bronze. Aegeans, as well as the subsequent Minoans, were located in what is today modern Greece and formed the basis of the ancient Greeks known widely in popular culture today. The Greek Bronze Age may have started as early as 3200 BC and saw the early people of the Mediterranean construct clothing, tools, and structures that incorporated elements of bronze. The region of Europe that would one day become Italy also experienced a rise in technological developments during the Bronze Age, spearheaded by the Comuni people, who resided in what is now the Lombardy region. The Comuni were part of the Apennine culture, and lived primarily as cattle herders in the mountains. Some regions associated with the Apennine culture used bronze tools to produce purple dyes and olive oils, trading with civilizations based in and around the Aegean and Mediterranean seas. It was a far cry from the land that would become the seat of the Roman Empire, but one that was already making major advancements in trade and production. The British Isles entered the Bronze Age around 2100 BC as people migrated from mainland Europe, bringing new technologies with them. Bronze Age graves near Stonehenge suggest some of these people may have traveled from the Alps, bringing with them wheels, blades, and tools. The Bronze Age Britons seemed to undertake drastic developments in burying their dead, 
switching from communal burial cairns to individual barrows where people could be honored and remembered separately. Cambridgeshire has provided a wealth of Bronze Age tools from Britain, where copper mines some 70 meters deep were established to create vast quantities of bronze. Ireland is thought to have entered the Bronze Age in 2000 BC, where flat axes, halberds, and knives were developed as defensive and offensive weapons. During this time, the early people of Ireland built up many stone circles and stone rows to honor the old gods of the British Isles. The ancient Egyptians were the first Africans to develop bronze. The metal was first worked in the proto-dynastic period, around 3100 BC. A wide range of artifacts have been produced from this time, most notably weapons, wheels, tools, mirrors, art, architecture, sculptures, and more, many of which have stood the test of time remarkably well. Several classically ancient Egyptian ornaments, such as human-animal figurines, sphinxes, and depictions of the gods, were fashioned around this time, which are typically highly intricate and expertly crafted. Sub-Saharan Africans typically developed copperworking and ironworking at the same times, and as such the Bronze Age in these regions is difficult to define. Bronzeworking is thought to have emerged in Nigeria around 900 BC, moving east in 700 BC and south in 300 BC. Other regions appear to have embraced the technology at different times, such as Algeria in 800 BC, strangely late considering its close proximity to Egypt. So that's a rundown of the ancient world in the Bronze Age. This was well and truly the age of civilization, when communities came together to form kingdoms and empires in a world that was beginning to harness the very same technologies we use regularly today. All the metalworking technologies present in the world today, from the construction of towering cities to the development of the computer or phone you're watching this very video on, can be traced back to those early pioneers who experimented with combining metals together. Machinery, advanced weapons, and political systems found their place in the world here, creating the blueprints for the entire world we know today. However, we're still very early on in our history here, and the forthcoming Iron Age will still introduce us to many more developments. Join us next time as we explore what came next for these early humans.